Welcome to Game of Roses. This is Pace Case. This is Bachelor Clues, and today is Friday, a very important Friday, which means it's a very important this week in Bachelor Nation. So much has already happened this week, Pace Case. We had our rookies announced. I we might be talking know. about that very soon. We had trouble deciding what to do for State of the Game. <laughs> there was so too much. much. Yeah, there was too much State of Game things happening, but we're going to get to that in a moment. And we're going to get to all mm -hmm. the Bachelor Nation news, that Traders Season 3 cast. We got some incredible parasocial plays and some screams coming up. But before mm -hmm. we get to any of that, we have a little bit of business as always. We're still looking for screeners. Now I get DMs still from people every week saying, what's a screener? Mm -hmm. A screener is mm -hmm. a copy of too the Too Hollywood show. clues. What's that? You're too Hollywood. <laughs> screeners is Hollywood? Maybe it is. That's too inside baseball. Perhaps. Yeah. A screener is simply an episode of The Bachelor that we would get to watch one day in advance. They would send them to you on Sunday, and then we would re be able to record our recap that comes out um, that Tuesday. So we don't have to wait until Monday night to watch it, basically. You know, they send them to a lot of podcasts. Yeah. A bunch of podcasts know, get these. That can get them early, get your content out early. But for us... We have another benevolent reason, which is that we want to do these watch parties and we can't join them unless we can somehow record early. Yes. So that that's what we're hoping for. If anybody out there has any access to get screeners or knows anybody who can get them, please DM us. Please let us know. Email us any way you can. We should also mention that today is, if you're listening to this on Friday, the premiere uh -huh. of Perfect Match <laughs> Season 2 on Netflix. I'm covering the whole thing in Clues Corner patreon.com oh slash game God. of roses join me for that <laughs> all six episodes this weekend i'm gonna try yeah I'm that's gonna, a lot a of that tent aka a content eh, i can do it now if you are here on this program from time to time you know that i'm musically inclined as of late i've been making some songs uh -huh. in honor of in tribute to our beloved game i have made can i steal you we premiered that here. I have made mm -hmm. For the Right Reasons. We premiered that here. And all these songs, by the way, yeah. are building up to become an album. Well, today, you're in for a treat. This is the world That's premiere. That's a bunch of songs in a row. That's right. Ten. I'm trying to get ten. I feel like ten is a good number for an album. And mm -hmm. maybe, again, if we can get screeners, or even if we can't, I would like to do like a live uh, listening party, a release party or something for this album, which is also called For the Right Reasons. I've made some cover art. I also coined my name because these are country songs. Yes. My country name Chaz. is Chad K. Just Chad. like in Bachelor, if there's more than one <laughs> That's Chad, very you have bachelor to use your... coded. Exactly. It's it's very bachelor Love coded, it. but it also kind of sounds country to me. Because it could be K A Y. And there's no Chad K out there. I don't think so. Music. Probably. Chad I don't K think there is. Musician. So now what I would like to do. Mm, there Pace is case. one. Chad Kroger, Canadian musician. <laughs> He's the lead singer of Nickelback. Lead singer and guitarist of Nickelback. Look at this photograph. I don't think I'm competing with Chad Kroger. Personally. Chad I, Kroger, he's coming for you. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever get to that level. However, today I'm going to try to get at least a little closer to Chad Kroger's level with my third song off this upcoming album. This song is called I'm Not Here to Make Friends. And let me just say, if you've been charting my evolution as a country bachelor themed song maker for the for these past How do you know songs, about my charts of your evolution? <laughs> <laughs> I just assumed I assumed you had evolution charts on me. If you've been following <laughs> my, my evolution through charts or no, you've seen, I think, that the my skill from can I steal you to uh, for the right reasons has gotten better. And I think now You'll Exponentially so, since the ones you were singing yourself. That's correct. Well, get ready for this one, because this one is... I'm not ready. I think it's a bona fide hit. I think this is a literal hit, kind of new country song in the vein of a hearty or a jelly roll or something like this. When I made it, I just was like, Lizzie has to hear this. And so now, if you're ready... Old Town Road? Yeah. That's my favorite country song. It's in that vein. <laughs> yeah, get ready. Are you ready to hear you gotta it? you got to go to an elementary school and dance with the kids to it. I'm never going to do that, but I will play the song for you right now. Are you ready, Pace Case? Yes. This is it. The world premiere of 
I'm not here to make friends. again oh <laughs> <laughs> my brother in christ yeah. this is by far your best work thank you i am so proud of you thank i you. like want to meet chad k he sounds like a babe he's sitting right here it's me oh i'm chad k oh yeah thank you for the, indulging the thank you for listening though. what's that <laughs> I want the one that's singing, though. I'm not here to make friends. It's like, oh, it's, it's great. It's like kind of raspy. Kind yeah. Of like... It's villainous, you know, which I thought the song had to be because anybody who says I'm not here to make friends. friends is immediately a villain and is like going to get mean, in fights with these other guys and stuff. This is like, I can see a, I can see Jed Wyatt making this music video. I cannot. I'm not here to make friends. I can't see Jed Wyatt. No offense to Jed Wyatt. I I don't think I would give him any of my songs. No Whoa. offense. I know. Shots fired. Jed Wyatt, uh, Captain Strays in yeah. today's episode. You brought him up. I'm simply, I want to go a I, little higher than that. As an homage. I, you know, it's just. You know what I'll, I feel like I'll give him? That was kind of his thing going in the show. Like, mm -hmm. I'm going to get my country music career. Going. I'll give him one song. The next song that I'm working on, just as a tantalizer, is called How Could You? parentheses make love to me <laughs> <laughs> i think we all know what that's about stop yes stop i'm already working yeah, you on don't it. give that to jed you give that to the other guy oh you think sean booth could record it i don't know if he uh does country music anyways thank you for indulging my third album off the upcoming album for the right reasons i love it when can we download these 
I'm when not can sure. I make a video of it on TikTok? I want to get all of them together. I want to get the album together. Then I'll probably put it all on Spotify. But here, if you're listening but to our can podcast. Can you release a single first? Yeah, Please. I guess I, I could. But I'd rather have all the songs done. I want to have the album fully done. A so that I know it's. Well, not a completionist. Just like I want to be able to ha- drop it all at the same time. And because I'm getting good with these mm. tools to make songs that I think are sounding better and better, by the end of this, I think like whatever my 10th song is going to be will be insanely good. And I want to be able to just drop it all and be like, here it is. Okay. I'm working on, Great. if you have any ideas for songs. Like Beyonce. Yeah. I'm the Beyonce of Bachelor themed country music. Now. I could, you could say I'm the Beyonce of Chad's. Uh, I don't even think that's true. Though. You and Chad Michael Murray. Chad Kroger, I think, is probably the the biggest Chad in the history of. I Chad's. literally never heard of that man. Nickelback? You've never heard of Nickelback? I think their their album, I mean, their the album with photographs. I mean, I and all know who on. Nickelback Platinum is. Album. I don't know who, like a um, a specific singer. He's Nickelback or whatever. He's Chad the Kroger's Nickelback. Nickelback. He he basically <laughs> is the whole band. He also There's was only, married it's only to. Only one person. Avril Lavigne. There's other guys in the band, but he's the one who wrote all the songs. He, he's the, the backbone of Nickelback. Canadian. Is he the singer? Yes. Oh. Okay. <laughs> he's the guy with the long hair, or at least had long hair at one time, then it became short hair. Can you sing it? I this can't really remember. How you remind, you remind me of what me I really am. I really it's not am. like oh, you yeah. to say sorry. So sorry. Was thinking of a different yeah. story. Different story. I'm so sorry, Chad Kroger. Yeah. I do know who you are, it turns out. Everybody knows who Nickelback is. Now, let's move on, Pace K, shall we? You're in to... the Beyonce of Chad K's. I'll take it. Let's move on to our first segment of our show. This is Game, Game of Roses. Of Roses. State of the game. We are in a great state of the game. The 25 rookies incoming to Gen Tran's historic Bachelorette Season 21 have been announced officially across all channels. And this is the time of year that I love the most. When I say time of year, it happens twice a year, by the way. Three times, actually. When we get to see the rookies and the anticipation begins to build in a very real way for the next season of our Mm -hmm. beloved game that is about to come out, which is about a month away, I guess. Month and two days away. We're going to have Jen Tram, uh, our first episode. The countdown. Yeah, the countdown has begun. It will be probably a a month and one day when you're listening to this, or even less. Uh, You know what started getting my spidey senses tingling for this next season? Please. The conveyor belt style video that the official yeah. Bachelor Instagram page put out, I agree. where there is all 25 rookies, and it basically seems like they're on a conveyor belt in this white heaven like room, and they all do a little dance, and it gives you so much more than a still image does. It gives you comparison because you get to see these guys literally right next to each other as they're sliding uh-huh. across your screen now. I will simply say this. Like, which one is your suitcase? Which one are you going to grab off? I'm going to initiate size gate, if I may. I thought you initiated size gate in the live. That's to right. Be, and now I'm spreading to clear, it to the masses. Now you're expanding it. You're, yes. Okay. <laughs> to size me? gate's going mainstream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. It is. This is what size gate is. In my opinion, Okay. you're looking at that conveyor belt video. And it does give you some yeah. idea of who's taller, who's shorter, how these guys comparatively uh-huh. kind of line up in terms of their body sizes. That said, this is an edited video. Those guys could have been uh-huh. shrunk or expanded to whatever desires the editor or producers had. And I'm not even saying they did it on purpose. What do to, you mean? To they make... all look roughly the same size, though. Like, no, they don't. If you know the ratio of what like a head is to a body... I'm not, not saying like they messed up head body ratios. Tiny... I'm just saying they could have shaved an inch off of a guy or given an inch to a guy, and you wouldn't notice mm. that, comparatively speaking, looking. But I'm not even saying that they did it like maliciously or, or to make somebody look better or worse. I think it may just have been a symptom of editing that video together requires you to take the 25 guys' green screen footage, cut them out, all that, and put them on there. And as you're making them go 
past with your your uh, motion graphics, you know, maybe you expand them a little or shrink them down to make them fit in the, the space as they're sliding across more. So I'm simply saying size gate is only this. You can't look at that video okay. and make any real objective comparison on how tall or short any of these guys are. That's size I gate. mean, I just don't think that's true. I think I can tell who's shorter in the video. Exactly. And I don't think you can. I think you can't trust that video I for a comparative height measurement. Size gate. Thank you. <gasps> I mean, agree to disagree on this conspiracy town. Oh. Uh, I feel like once we get the facts in, once we get their official heights, we'll we'll know more. But I'm pretty sure I can tell. The shorter ones are the ones whose heads appear to be bigger because they've all been shrunken to, to look the same height. Anyway... <laughs> Okay. The more details about the cast that probably people are anticipating more. We know that this cast was originally for Maria Georgias, and we don't know whether the Venn diagram of the kind of guys Jen likes versus the kind of guys that Maria likes would be. Um, and we are going to be doing our in depth breakdown of everyone's social media in the two weeks leading up to Jen's season. So we will be going more in depth, but we thought we would bring you our first impressions and five guys, five rookies that were very interesting to us at first glance. Starting off uh, top of the list alphabetically, Aaron, whose last name you might recognize, Herb. He's 29 <laughs> years old. This is Noah Herb's twin brother. They come from a family, I believe, of 11 sibs. Twin brother of no herb. I don't think it's identical. Nonetheless, this is a person who is going to be coached by one of the biggest players from the recent eras. If you remember, young Noah Herb came yes. in to season 16 of Bachelorette, made some very famous plays. He crashed a mixed martial arts cage fighting date. <laughs> he had some mm -hmm. experimental Jumped mustache over play. Fence. He had a rivalry with um, the, the jacked guy, Bennett, Andrew. Jordan. Jordan. And, oh, just one thing before we get into the guys. There's also 25 players, which is yeah. a small, small uh, rookie pool, which I like. I think that's good. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's going back to basics. You know, if you look at... Uh... Mm -hmm. the, the first three seasons of Bachelor, basically, were this 25 players. If you look at the most recent seasons, starting in the bubble seasons of our beloved game, Claire Crawley, Tasha Adams had 31 players. You had Katie Thurston's season. That is season 17 of The Bachelorette had 31. Michelle Young's season had 30. Gabby Windy and Rachel Recchia, they had way more, I think. They had 32 players. Charity Lawson had, oh, Charity Lawson only had 25. Okay, so they're sticking oh, with that. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So, so they're, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I think that's a, a good thing to do, honestly. Yeah. Charity season, I mean, should be the the format. Um, What do we know about the young Noah Herbs, young twin bro, Aaron? He is an aerospace engineer ready to love someone to the moon and back. Uh, this is just from his, his cast bio. This is kind of the little blurbs they put up about all of them. When Aaron isn't working hard, building satellites to send into space, he loves spending time on the lake, playing volleyball, perfecting his golf game. Some fun facts about him. Aaron's most embarrassing haircut was rocking a middle part. Aaron is a force of nature on the pickleball court. Will we see a pickleball date? Maybe. Aaron Ooh, is officially Gary. seven minutes older than Noah. So indeed, Noah Herb still oh, maintains his title, the Young old Noah Aaron Herb. Herb. Old Aaron Herb and Young Noah Herb. Old we Aaron. See, <laughs> if if Aaron does well and makes it to hometowns, we could see a reprisal of Young Noah Herb now engaged to Abigail Herringer, both living in Oklahoma. We could see Young Noah Herb come back into our beloved game. Love to see Oklahoma that. Oklahoma becomes its own its own team, maybe. Perhaps. Moving on. If they gain that kind of star power. I mean, just based off of this headshot and the convertible conveyor belt, I think he's going to hometowns. 
I mean, I think they probably have that design for him for sure. I don't think they, well, I don't know though. You know, they put in relatives. We, we see some nepotism casting from time to time. It doesn't always work out. Look at Matt James' mom. Look at Sweet Num's mm-hmm. friend who were both uh, night one players in Golden Season 1, Golden Bachelor Season 1. I don't know. We shall see. We'll see. We'll see. Moving on, we got Brett Harris. Next up. 28. Health and safety manager from Mannheim, Pennsylvania. He was a football player at Millersville University. I don't know what that is. That may be a D2, D3 school. I'm not sure. If it's D1, my apologies. It says, this small town boy has big dreams when it comes to finding love. Brett has great energy, strong confidence, and a lot of personality to go around. Three fun facts. Brett can do the splits and will do them on command. We better see that. Brett has never left the United Uh, States, but hopes to one day. Well, if he makes it far, he'll have to. As a kid, Brett accidentally shaved off his own eyebrows right before picture day. Accidentally. Interesting. Now, Brett is a little bit of a bigger guy. He kind of breaks the mold. How do you accidentally shave off both eyebrows? I don't. I simply don't know. I don't understand that. I don't feel like maybe one is possible, but I don't know. I don't yeah, know it seems purposeful. Brett. He was going for a, a no eyebrow look, maybe as a child. Mm-hmm. But Brett is physically a little bit outside the the norm of what we see on The Bachelor, which I think is always a good thing. That's one of the areas of diversity that casting is uh, sorely lacking in. Terrible so, at. <laughs> yeah, absolutely terrible. But at least here we've got one player in the mix who is a little different, Mm -hmm. a little outside the box. We wish Brett luck. Next up, we have Jahan Ansari, 28-year-old startup founder from the New York Influence, New York City. Jahan is an extremely smart, successful guy who founded his own company, has prioritized his career throughout his 20s. Now that this Forbes 30 under 30 bachelor has built his empire, he's truly ready to meet a woman with whom to share it all. Do you think we're going to hear about this 30 under 30 thing? If we do, he is dead in the water. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, I think bragging about that you're on a Forbes list is just not going to go over well with the second audience, certainly not with the first audience. We got some fun facts. It might facts. happen based on these fun facts. Yeah. <laughs> if you challenge Jahan to a game of chess, you'll most likely lose. And Jahan he's out of is, commission if he gets hangry. That's the whole show. He'll, he's going to be out of commission literally for every episode. <laughs> I'm hangry. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. Jahan is just like, I need food. Uh, learning to fly plane is on his bucket list. All right. Well, there you go with Jahan. Interesting. I don't know if chess is going to come into play this season, but we shall see. Next up, we got Kevin mm, McDevitt. I don't know. Jen... Jen might play chess, but she also says a bunch of, quote, stupid little shit. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever Joey said. Not quote. (laughs) Uh, Next up, we got Kevin McDevitt, 35, financial analyst from Denver. This thrill seeker is ready to find love. Kevin's an adventurous guy who loves living on the edge by going skydiving, bungee jumping, and cliff diving. Now he's ready to dive headfirst into romance as he looks for his future wife with The Bachelorette. Fun facts, Kevin has been skiing over 200 times. It's a lot of times. Kevin cannot, under any Ooh. circumstance, tolerate bugs. You will be Same. forced to eat them in this TV show. And he can be used, Kevin used to own his own barbecue restaurant. So he's a little bit of a restaurateur. Mm, like Gary. Well, so he says. <laughs> Who are we to believe, Gary or the Hollywood so Reporter? Said- <laughs> Let's move on to <laughs> our fifth and final player that we want to highlight, Caleb Moe's Dangerous Smith, 25. Moe's spelled M-O-Z-E. He is an algebra teacher from Albany, New York. And his little quote says, class is in session. Caleb, a.k.a. Moe's, is an algebra teacher who's ready to see if Moe's plus Jen equals true love. That, that's a... Somebody got to do a little better writing than that. The self-proclaimed... That's tough. That's sorry. tough. I hope that's not said coming out of the window. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's definitely not. Uh, the self-proclaimed certified lover boy is charismatic, charming, and serious Ooh. about settling down. Now, his fun facts are very interesting. Speaks Spanish fluently. Are we going to see an aloha here? Moe's played football professionally so. in the XFL. For those of you who don't know. Let's go. The XFL. Is that the lingerie one? No. That was the... I forget what that was called. The something else FL. This The XFL was guys, and it was a football league created by Vince McMahon. X-League. What? LFL? 
Yeah, it, it was, was LFL. The LFL. It was Legends. Legends Football League. Legends. Yeah. That was wow. the the female football league, the female tackle football league that I don't believe is around anymore. I don't think the XFL is either. The Rock now is trying to make his own football league, but the XFL was Vince McMahon's brainchild. He created this uh, football league for players basically to be able to play tackle football. It had weird extreme rules that the NFL did not have, and he tried to air it in the off season like of what? the NFL. Uh, like instead of a kickoff, for example, they would put the football in the middle of the field on the 50 yard line and they would send and two race. guys. Yeah. Each from the end Love zone that. to run and pick up the ball. And then that is the team that wins in quotes. I the want kickoff, them to do that. That kind of stuff. Again, that seems good. They yeah. should also put them in bubbles so that they can't get um, CTE. That should be a new one. The third fact, Moe's can't date you if you have a pet tarantula. You have a lot of anti-bug people in this group. I go along with Moe's on this one. I wouldn't do that either. Hopefully, Jen Tran does not have a pet tarantula. Or that's going to be an immediate deal breaker. Does. You think night one, that's the night one curveball. She brings out her tarantula. Yeah. <laughs> and Moe's is just like, I'm out. <laughs> just starts running. Yeah. He's like, I thought you explicitly told Adios. me there would be no tarantulas. <laughs> What's going on here? Mose plus Jen equals disaster. Yeah, arachnophobia. But that is just a sprinkling, a smattering of five of these mm -hmm. 25 players. Again, we're going to be covering all of them in the two weeks leading up to Jen Tran's premiere. We're going to break down all their Instagrams and go through it with a fine tooth comb, give our predictions about where we think these guys are going to wind up toward the end of the season. But that's it. That's the state of the game. The players are out. They're loose. They're back on Instagram. They're posting. You can follow them. Check them all out and uh, join follow us all of them. for our breakdown. Yeah, I, that's the first thing I do. As soon as even that the initial list comes out, like it came out a couple of months ago, <laughs> I follow them all. So I'm still now following guys who get cut and don't ever even wind up on the show, just watching their lives unfold. The people who <laughs> never came on. Beautiful. Bachelor. That's what I do. That's all right. your XFL. <laughs> it kind of is. <laughs> It kind of, I mean, seriously, I go through it because I'm like in my head, I try to put myself in their position that they were an inch away from playing the greatest mm -hmm. game on earth. being a night one player. Or maybe not. Who the hell knows? Even if you're a night one player, yeah. though, maybe you become Grocery Store Joe, mm -hmm. who's now on the GOAT, which you can maybe. also check out my analysis of on patreon.com slash Gabe of Roses. Now, let's move on, Pace Case, if we may, to a segment that we only do during the off season. This is... What are you watching? What are you watching? What am I watching? OMG. For HBO Lax, I watched part one and part two of The Lost Pilot. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Although a lot of body shaming, which was one shocking, of the greatest pilots ever 2004. made. 2004. In the history of TV. It's really good if you haven't watched it. Um, and The Game of Thrones pilot, also really good, even though I had remembered it being boring. I also am watching Bridgerton season two. Have you seen it? No, I have not. I don't think. No, I have not. I've seen. No I am Bridgerton. many episodes in, and I finally got to the first sex scene, which my is ridiculous based on my memories of season one. Yeah. <laughs> no Outlander. Um, well. and I'm watching also Dark Matter. Dark Matter TV show came out. What is that about? Uh, based on the Blake Crouch book about, well, I don't even want to say what it's about. Time travel But it's or good sci-fi. Okay. Maybe I'll check that out. Mm -hmm. Once Just I get through six it. episodes of Perfect Match this weekend. It's good. All right. And um, Jennifer Connelly plays the his wife, and she's so good. She's a great actress. Loved her in everything she's ever yeah. done. All the way back to the, what was that Wizard of Oz movie that she was in? Return to Oz. I didn't see that. She was um, great in Top Gun. Top Gun. Maverick. Maverick. <laughs> yes. Sorry. I highly <laughs> encourage you to watch if you like also Jennifer Snow Connelly. Piercer. Yeah, she was great in Snowpiercer. Alex Proyas made a movie called Dark City. It was his follow-up to The Crow in probably 1998 or 99. Highly encourage you to watch that if you like Jennifer Connelly. Um, Clues, what are, are you watching? I'm watching some interesting stuff. Outlander has slowed down. I'm forcing myself to consume it. Mm. This is 
similar Why? to eating a bad meal at this point. Season one was riveting. As I mentioned, basically pornography with a little time travel thrown mm -hmm. in. Season mm -hmm. two is exactly the opposite. There is almost <laughs> no pornography and <gasps> everything that was fun about season one is now completely boring. The two main characters fled Scotland after uh, the, the female main character broke the male main character out of this prison after he was sexually assaulted by his captor, who's kind of the big villain oh of the, the season. I know. Man it was or a, woman? A man. It was a oh. wild first season of a show. I've never really seen anything like it. That so, happened in the book? I don't know. I will never read the book, and I don't know. I don't even... I can't be bothered to even Google if it happened in the book. But <laughs> they leave. They flee Scotland. They wind up uh -huh. in France, where all of a sudden, he's having dinner with princes and kings and I don't, he went from being a kind of like fisticuffs living in the mud and the dirt Scottish Highlander who's yeah. fighting against the Redcoats to now he's Parisian aristocratic lifestyle and so is she and there's no conflict whatsoever. Their entire goal mm. is to change history by convincing uh, this English aristocrat to not give money to the Scottish rebellion that, that she knows historically will get crushed by the English and all these Scottish people are going to die who she now knows personally. So she basically has told him, I'm a time traveler. I know all this shit. We have to stop the, the Scottish rebellion from happening. And that's their whole the goal. The king? What's that? Oh, no. She's told her love interest that. Yes. Who now gotcha. somehow has all these connections to the upper crust aristocrats in Paris and England, and he's bending their ears trying to get them to not give money to the Jacobite rebellion. And I'm just like, narratively, it couldn't be more boring. How? Is she doing that through her knowledge of the past? Like, oh, I already know your future yeah. or something? She comes from 200 years in the future. She knows what happened to the Jacobite rebellion. Crushed. Yeah. Everybody killed. And she's like, if you guys mount this rebellion, all of your friends will die. Then there's some little uh, paradoxy things start popping up. She meets this woman who is ultimately going to become the wife of the guy that sexually assaulted her husband. And that guy and that woman will sire a lineage that produces ultimately her husband in the future. So she's like, I can't. Her love interest is the descendant? No. Or is the ancestor of her husband? No. The love interest's enemy is the ancestor of oh. her husband in the future, who looks exactly <gasps> oh, like her the husband. the evil bloodline. Yes. And the, the pilot of season two opens with her coming back to the future, back to 1946 or whatever, 47, and being with her original husband, who looks exactly like the bad guy. And so she's like, oh, don't touch me, don't touch me. But it seems like they're kind of working things out. And now we flash back, and we're in the past again, but now, again, in Paris, with no fighting, no sex, and he's just walking around being like, I think we've got to convince you to stop giving money to the Jacobite Rebellion. <laughs> and that's the whole thing. It's th The narrative is, the main character's goal uh -huh. is to stop action from happening. That is a terrible narrative goal. Mm -hmm. It's just hard to watch. It's, it's incredibly very, boring. Uh, amorphous. Yeah. Interesting. I wonder if it's like the first book was the first season, maybe the second book. I think you should just keep going. Oh, I have to. Don't stop. Absolutely and, have to. Uh, yeah. Hey, I really enjoy hearing the little impressions. I want to hear if there's more sex. I mean, they did that in Thank this you. fucking Bridgerton show, too. I was like, yeah. huh? What is going on? They, yeah. If you're going to take out the main guy the main Bridgerton guy that got everyone to watch the show, mm. you got to at least bring in another guy and uh, keep the sex going. Yeah. There's my note. I agree. For season, season one, three, which has already come out. Yeah. <laughs> Re-edit it. Go do some reshoots and edit that new Re stuff in. I'm hoping yeah. they <laughs> I'm waiting. Mistakes. You know, you, you laugh at that. That's coming. That's case coming. case cut. You're going to be able to do a cut of any show you want to suit your needs. That's probably two or three years Great. away. The tourist cut. I just uh, was at a family dinner where someone was reading the descriptions of your horoscope and sensual was descri a descriptor for Taurus. So, wow. Well, it's not my fault. It's my birth month's fault. Yeah. Mm. Congrats. And stubborn. 
sensual and stubborn, the greatest combination. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, what's our next topic? <laughs> this is. Bachelor Nation News. First up, in Bachelor Nation News, the Trader Season 3 cast has been announced. And for the first time in Trader's history, not one, but two Bachelor players will be testing their skills of deception under the watchful eye of Alan Cumming in the Scottish Highlands. Bachelor Season 26 co-runner-up and Bachelorette Season 19 co-bachelorette Gabby Windy, the lovable dingbat, will be representing our beloved game alongside the 8th place finisher from JoJo Fletcher's Bachelorette Season 12, VIP Season 3 participant and bartender of the now-defunct Bachelor in Paradise, Wells Adams. What in the Sarah Highland? How did this happen? I think it happened because of Sarah Highland. She has connections yeah, yeah. in the TV world that Wells Adams does not. Um, I believe she has some relationship with NBC, maybe. I'm not sure. Or with Peacock, I mean. But um, I don't know. Hmm. I think she pulled strings to get him on the she's show. she's no longer the Love Island host, right? She got replaced by Ariana? Yeah, I think so. I think that's accurate. Mm. The two Bachelor players are going to be up against some tough competition in the rest of the 21-person cast. This includes Sam. Sam Asgari, the ex-husband of Britney Spears. He has 2.9 million followers. Not available TikTok. <laughs> I won't say what your role projection yeah. is. <laughs> the document we're reading from is one that I'm going to use. I will make a video where I go through all of these, kind of like the Perfect Match Season 2 cast list video, which is out right now on YouTube if you haven't checked that out. I'm going to break down every one of these players ultimately with their stats and what I think they will be in the first round, Faithful or Trader. We also have Chanel Ayan, who is from Real Housewives of Dubai. Uh, Legend. We got Bob the Drag Queen from RuPaul, who has 3 million TikTok viewers which is one of the biggest numbers Let's that we go. see in this whole list okay this <laughs> i have to disagree with you with your projection on this one um the next one is dolores catania she is from real housewives of new jersey she is terrifying to me <laughs> that's why they ain't gonna make her a traitor <laughs> you don't <laughs> I, yeah but she would root out the traitors. It's too obvious. I, I don't think they make like people who you suspect are going to be traitors. I don't think they'll make them traitors. I don't know. She's we'll a see. great character, though. She has a million followers um, and 30K on TikTok. I can't wait to see what she does. We also have Jeremy Collins, a three-time Survivor player and champion of Survivor Cambodia. Very low um, social media numbers, but anybody who wins Survivor as we have seen in this game, <laughs> has a good shot at doing very well in Traders. Yes. And next up, another housewife, Robin Dixon from Real Housewives of Potomac, the best one. She has 592K on Instagram. That seems low. Um, That's the number. I don't think she's going to be very good at this game, to be honest. We will see. Yeah. We also sure. have a Nepo casting Dylan Efron, Let's Zach go. Efron's brother, who's got 866K Instagram, 230K TikTok, nothing big. Now our next player. If Nikki. he's anything like his brother, he's got to be a faithful. <laughs> 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 I was well, started trying to watch that docu show he did. It was terrible. Yeah, I agree. Anyway, who's up next? Next is the biggest star in the show by a magnitude that is not even really measurable. This is Nikki Garcia, a.k.a. Nikki Bella of the Bella Sisters. She is a WWE superstar. She has 10.6 million Instagram followers and 1.1 million on TikTok. This is something that I have long discussed. Reality TV and pro wrestling are the same thing. And here we are seeing the further merger of these ideas. And uh, I don't know if she's going to do well or not. I think she will. Only because the WWE is, in terms of like being able to work with a second audience, being able to engage with the other players that you're playing the game against and with, the WWE, I think, is 
incredible training for that because you have to kind of be friends with all the other wrestlers and you kind of, but also like you may beat them in a match. You may have to like fake that you have beef with them or whatever. I think especially the era she came through was especially treacherous. And I think it is going to give her a leg up in this game. I also feel like just having that many followers, I feel like they will try to protect those people, but we shall see. Indeed. I, and I wonder if they're still going to do, like, they choose the Faithfuls versus Traders. Next up is Bob Harper from The Biggest Loser, 338K on Instagram. We got Brittany Haynes, a three-time Big Brother player. No championships. I don't know if that bodes mm-hmm. well or, or at all for her. I think that's good because you have less of a target on your back. Yeah. Oh, next up, one of my favorite reality TV characters, Boston Rob Mariano, six-time Survivor player, one-time Survivor champion, two-time Amazing Race player, Deal or No Deal Island. Let's go. What a a career reality player. I mean, uh, one of the Survivor seasons I was watching, they just like voted all of the like older cast members out immediately, and he was out, Mm. and I was so sad because he's he's a great character. Yeah. We also got Dorinda Medley from Real Housewives of New York. One million Instagram followers. Not this as good on TikTok, but one of my favorite, um, one of my favorites of these castings. She's gonna yeah. be amazing. Next we up all- is Sierra Miller from Summer House and Winter House. Two hundred ninety three k. That again is low. I am These surprised. She, I mean, it's Bravo. I guess they don't they don't get as high, yeah. but. And in keeping with their tradition of casting somebody from British royalty or British politics, Lord Ivar Mountbatten, who is the cousin of King Charles, is also entering this game with 8,346 Instagram followers. I cannot wait to see this guy do whatever he's going to do. Right? So happy about this. Wild. Yeah. The cousin of King Charles and the brother of Zac Efron. They got to team up as Nepo babies. Yeah. Um, Daniel Reyes is a three-time Big Brother player, one-time runner-up, 3.3K on Instagram. And we also got Tom Sandoval. He's making the rounds. He's in every one of these third-wave shows now. Vanderpump Rules, of course, Special Forces, Tough Test, Mass Singer. He's doing it all. He's got a million Instagram followers. We all know who he is. He is just becoming more and more famous through this. Next up, a super famous player, Chriselle Staus, star of Selling Sunset and Dancing with the Stars, 3.9 million on Instagram. We got... They'll protect her as well. She's I don't think they do protection in the show. The game is the game. They kicked Johnny Bananas off on the first episode in season two. It's not about... So? What does he mean for Peacock? I don't know that it is... I just don't think they do that. I don't think they can because there's money mm. on the line and stuff. And and from everything we have talked to mm. everyone about, right. the game is kind of left alone meddle. by the producers in this. I don't know. We'll see. Up next, we have Tony Vlachos, a three-time <gasps> Survivor player, two-time champion, one-time runner-up. I mean, at least from things I've read about him, he is arguably the greatest Survivor player of all time. I think he's definitely up there for top characters. I only saw, I guess, his first season. And he had this, like, his signature thing was that he would make this little hideout and spy on people's conversations because he was, like, (laughs) secretly a cop. It was so entertaining to watch. He's going to be incredible on the show. Mm -hmm. I have goosebumps. He only has 2.1K on Instagram? Yeah. What? Survivor? I guess doesn't do shit. Yeah, Survivor players have the worst Instagram, worst social media numbers, like hands down. That's surprising to me. Next up, another Survivor player, Carolyn Weiger, one-time Survivor player. I don't think I've seen her play. She, I looked at some of her Instagram. stuff. Her face play is off what the season? charts. Uh, it was a recent one. It was like two seasons ago, three seasons ago. I think she washed out in like sixth place or 44. something. 44. Okay. I just finished 45. So I'll yeah. do that next. And then, of course, we got Gabby Windy. <laughs> but have to uh, good luck to everybody on Trader Season 3, including Gabby and Wells, as they both represent our beloved game and the greatest mixed martial arts reality television program ever created. And I hope Gabby Windy destroys Wells Adams. That's I just hope she personally. destroys them all. Me too. No Love Island this season. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, the only love games Mm -hmm. were Bachelor. 
double represented. Well, it's going to be a competitive season. I mean, this is, is a stacked cast. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I wish Paris Hilton was in it, but, you know, I think maybe season four. Yeah. That Nikki Bella to me is like. I've never heard of that person. <laughs> Sorry. No, if you're not into pro wrestling, like, why would you? You you probably know the same pro wrestling names that, like, everybody on the planet knows. The Rock, Hulk the Hogan. Rock. That may be it. Those two. Stone Cold yeah. Steve Austin. Maybe you know The Undertaker. Okay, three. Something like that. You know some. Stone Cold, The yeah. Rock, and Hulk Hogan. Yeah, but Brother. the Garcia sisters were not. They were at the height of WWE when they had this thing called Divas. They were like the premier Divas. Hmm. Anyway, neither here nor there. Well, speaking of Divas, up next in Bachelor Nation News, Netflix. Proves once again they're the best game in town when it comes to building out a reality universe on their network. This week, the streaming giant threw a party to kick off their new slate of summer reality shows. It begins today with six episodes of Perfect Match Season 2. The lavish event was held at 1859 Bel Air Road, a massive mega mansion featured on the most recent season of Buying Beverly Hills. The event welcomed reality superstars from across the Netflix reality universe, including the cast of Love is Blind, The Circle, The Ultimatum, Too Hot to Handle, Selling Sunset, Selling the OC, Buying Beverly Hills, Selling Tampa, Love on the Spectrum, Squid Game, The Challenge, Perfect Match Season 2, American Sweethearts, Dallas Cowboys Cheerleaders, The Mole Season 2, King of Collectibles, The Golden Touch Season 2, and Owning Manhattan. <laughs> I mean, everyone was there. There is simply no other studio or network promoting their reality players at this level. The bar has been raised. Will any other streamer or network ever come close to this level of promotion? Time will tell, but I don't think so. I don't think so either. I mean, just looking at this list now, I'm like, oh, yeah, Buying Beverly Hills are now doing spinoffs of. Yeah. They're doing a buying show. Owning Manhattan. I never even heard of that. I know. These are like half real estate shows. But And this wasn't just like one or two players from each of these shows. It was like almost the whole cast. Harry Jowsey was there. Like the biggest superstars they have on all of these shows were mm. all at this party. So I can only assume Netflix flew I them mean, out. That should be in their contracts. No, maybe it is that they have to attend for promotional reasons. I don't know. But it was great. Up next in Bachelor Nation news, two of Netflix's stars who were in attendance at the big party were another, none other than Love is Blind Season 5's Lydia Velez Gonzalez and Milton Johnson, who celebrated their two-year anniversary. They were legally wed on Love is Blind on May 31st, 2022. In an interview with People Magazine, Lydia said, it feels longer than two years. It's like, oh, really? Just two years? I cannot imagine my life without Milton anymore. I don't even remember what that was like. Milton said, we're still just as playful as we've always been. For me, it feels pretty normal. It's two years. We've already been through everything together. Congrats to Lydia and Milton on navigating the treachery of Love is Blind Season 5 and proving that despite all the obstacles producers can throw in your way, the process does indeed work. At least it did for them. Love is Blind. And finally, in Bachelor Nation news, we have some news about a different couple. The Season 12 Bachelorette Caitlin Bristow and the second Bachelorette Season 16 ring winner Zach Clark have added more fuel to the flames of dating rumors that have emerged since they were first spotted together at Caitlyn's New Year's Eve party in Nashville at the beginning of this year. And last month, the former bachelorette attended Zach's gala for his nonprofit, where they were seen singing and dancing together. Now the dating rumors continue as Zach and Caitlyn were just seen together at a wedding where they were photographed on the side of the dance floor. The photo has been circulating around many Bachelor Nation fan accounts since the event over the weekend. Neither Zach nor Caitlin have shared photos of themselves together at any of these events. Usually, though, in Bachelor Nation, where there's relationship smoke, there's relationship fire. <laughs> but until it's confirmed, we can only speculate about their status. But they're dating, right? I mean, I'm shipping it. They're, they're dating. I thought they were dating from the New Year's gif. <laughs> the New Year's thing to and me was like... And you said no. I was just like, but it's, I was like, it's no, New they're, Year's. They're... Like, you know, they're drunk. It's New Year's Eve. They they have the familiarity from both being within the nation. Maybe it was just a, a moment of flirtation. Add... You know? I mean, that's a dangerous game right there. You're both very famous. Within the nation. I don't know. I don't think you do that for the first time like that. I don't but know. But then... so. If this has been going on since New Year's, six months now, 
and they haven't officially announced anything? Why? Hmm. Well, maybe it was, yeah, more casual. I don't know. Don't there, there's something the strange city. about it to me that they haven't made it official. They that don't it's live just in the same city. These... What does that it's mean? Long dist. What would you say? Distance. They're a long dist. I thought you were saying something about Teresa Nist. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were it's like, Teresa Nist. Yeah. It's the tough thing. Nisting. They're nisting. All right. Uh, let's move on. That wraps up our Bachelor Nation news. Let's move on now to some of those plays that all of our favorite nisting players are making. Nisting is giving a comforting hand to someone who's nervous driving. Oh. Okay. Let's move on to some comforting hands being given out by our favorite players on their telephones. This is. The parasocial play, 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 play of the week. There were a stacked list of great parasocial plays this week from around the nation. Here are your top five. Number five. Ashley Iaconetti is always in the discussions of the strongest parasocial players in the game, and this week offered no exception. She created a gorgeous offering, a photo slideshow Instagram reel under the Chiron, this is what college looked like in the Facebook era. She depicts herself and civilians posing in various innocent shenanigans, wearing baseball hats, kissing shirtless man posters, and even a close-up of a tramp stamp. Quite similar to Bachelor Clues' tramp stamp, but his is a butterfly. The caption reads, album title, I'm bringing sexy back. 458k views, 7.7k likes. Not only do I not have a tramp stamp, (laughs) the only tattoo that I do have is not a butterfly. It's a dragon. Thank you very much. Got it when I was 18 years old. Proud of it to this day. But what about the one you gave yourself? Oh, I have some little stick and pokes that I gave myself when I was 12 or 13. Everybody has that. Now. No, I don't. Really? Pure skin. Oh. You don't don't scratch up a Ferrari. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. Even at a young age, I knew I wasn't working with a Ferrari. So I was like, (laughs) let's put some some, uh, dimension onto this. Let's get some decals going. All right. Now. Some decals going. You shall gaze upon me. Said our latest crown, the gazeman Joey Grazia Day, unveiling his new elbow tattoo on Instagram. The caption reads, 15, get a new tattoo. This tattoo is held very close to my heart. It reads, Pache e Goya. I don't know. Pache e Goya. Pache e Goya. And Will, my my friend who's Italian, would kill me here. In my grandmother's handwriting, which means peace. I'm also Italian. And joy in Italian. Oh, all right, well. I've got death coming from every direction. It's literally my last name, Pace. Oh, I thought it was Pace. It's Italian. It means peace. That's it what was I'm shortened from right Pacapelli, which from my grandfather, which meant without hair. Interesting. Good choice. Yeah. As you can <laughs> see in the video, my grandma wanted to get this tattoo for herself, so my family decided to get it in her honor heart emoji. The elbow demonstration photo is followed by a flashback video of his grandma declaring wanting that tattoo, but not saying where, then a close-up of the words, then one of him and his sister with matching tats. But she got these words burned into her wrist and then images of the process, followed by, (laughs) lastly, a notebook-style list of things Joey wants to do before 30, including a lot of sporting events, taking his parents on trips, crossing a bucket list item off for a sick kid, and taking a pottery class. Uh Uh-oh, as Whoopi Goldberg said. (laughs) Peter, you're in danger, boy. Watch out, Popeye. Someone's coming for your spot as number one crown film doing ghost pottery with disembodied arms and Whoopi Goldberg. 108.5K likes. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm glad I made that one one sentence. <laughs> oh, that was tough. <laughs> that Ugh, was tough I one. read, by the way, Pacha e Gioia as oh. Pace Case and Joyal. Fun fact. Okay. Makes sense. Bachelor season 28 third place finisher Rachel Nance and Bachelorette 20 and VIP season 9 ring winner John Henry made a splash with the number three top parasocial play this week, a TikTok starting dating rumors of the pair. Nance posted this five second video of the two enjoying a romantic dinner in Hawaii 
where they lip synced a playful conversation. The caption reads, my wallet was not harmed in the making of this video. The offering went viral, amassing 2.8 million views, 271K likes. Although Nance and John Henry haven't confirmed their relationship, the nation is enthusiastically shipping the potential new couple in the comments. They're doing more to present themselves as a couple than Bristow and Clark. And they've been dating for yeah. maybe a day or two. No, I mean, we don't know. Weeks. All right. We don't know. Moving on. Our number two parasocial play of the week is Lala. <laughs> no. Okay. I'm just going to read this as written. Lala. No, I'm not singing. I'm calling out for Dark Lord Cummings' dog. DLC posted a series of videos of his dark creature, Lala, in the traitor's castle. Lala's face on the tote. Tote Sorry? bag. Oh, the bag. Lala chases some birds on the grounds. DLC does Lala's voice. I love my castle. Lala takes the stairs. DLC posts his NBC pass in which he's in full taut. Then Lala's full taut pass. Then Lala finally circles the creepy empty fountain as DLC cheers her on. Woohoo! That was my best woohoo as that uh, was really good. Alan Cumming, thank you. Woohoo! Woo indeed. 7.9K likes. I Great love creature Lala. Play. All of these were strong plays. However, there can only be one winner. Our parasocial play of the week, our top offering was Daisy Kent. She posted a five slide carousel on Instagram this week of her in a full rainbow taut dress, followed by a few day in the life shots of her with family and electric picks necklace, Abercrombie dress, a balloon garland and show me your moo moo spawn con. The caption reads, always feels good to be home. Location pin emoji, 106.7K likes. While this post doesn't necessarily say happy pride directly, the active comment section suggests that the sentiment was felt. While many users issued support, some users, like Wall, wrote in, sorry Daisy, Christian values do not equal pride. The rainbow belongs to capital G-O-D. I'm out. We are not out on Daisy, though, and we wish everyone a happy Pride. LGBTQ Pride Month is celebrated every June, honoring the 1969 Stonewall Uprising in Manhattan, a tipping point for the gay liberation movement in the U.S. Great play. Love seeing this coming from Daisy Kent. I also got lost a little bit mm -hmm. in that comment section. Uh, just yep. how can you not? It's I had to put the one by wall. That one is one of the top ones, I think, that is just shake your head at that. Nonetheless, these are all great plays. And this week, our parasocial creature, we already said it. It goes to Lala, Alan Cummings' beautiful dog. I mean, I just, there's a lot of great creature play, of course, from around yeah. all nations. Traders, uh, Bachelor mm -hmm. constantly has great ones. But Lala, there's something special about Lala. Lala is also a yeah. character in the Traders. And this was done because Alan Cummings said, I'll do this show, but I get to bring my dog. And my dog gets yes. to dress up in the same stuff I dress up in. And my dog gets to roam the grounds freely, <laughs> yeah. pissing and shitting wherever she wants. We've never seen a parasocial creature quite like this in any of these shows. And I absolutely love Lala and everything that Alan Cumming is doing to bring Lala into our world, into the world of the traders. So congrats to Alan Cumming. Yeah. And to it was Lala. a close runner up. Lala is like, if you're not watching this on YouTube, she's a tiny little black dog and she has a tail that's like as big as her body. It's so cute. It looks like a fox mm. or something. Yeah. She's a very cute creature. But that wraps up all the parasocial plays from humans and creatures alike. Now it's time at the end of the program for Pace Case and I to descend deep into the bottom of the pit and issue forth our screams about how our fandom of this program, of reality TV generally, has drastically altered our lives. This is... Screams from the Pit! I previewed my scream a little while ago. Um, I said that I was going to be staying at the same resort as they had filmed the Mexico meetup for Love is Blind Denver, mm -hmm. a season that has not come out yet. Uh, but I was going to a wedding and the bride told me that they had filmed there. This is the Kimpton Mas Olas Resort and Spa in Baja, California, Mexico. And... Uh, that was a level one scream when the bride told me that. I was like, oh, of course. Of course they fell in love as blind at the hotel we're staying at. I, nothing can be <laughs> away from our beloved games. Yeah. Like, I, I can't escape. 
And not only did I not stop thinking about this fact the entire time I was there, it became from a one straight to a three scream because I just started filming all of the different locations. I started filming everything that I thought could be a potential date. I was like, this is where they're going to get them blackout drunk. And the resort was so stunning that I was like, if I was on a show that filmed here, I would do whatever anyone was telling me to keep staying in that resort. Yeah. Like it's, it was very, very nice. Uh, Beautiful wedding. Oh, fantastic. I also think, though... And I that... talked to everyone at the wedding, telling them, did you know Love is Blind Denver was filmed here? Did anybody No know? one was interested. Nobody cared about that? No. What? Shame on I, these people. You can I mean, no maybe be one friends. person I talked to was like a reality person. Yeah. Oh, that's no fair. I do think the more that reality TV expands, we're in this explosive moment of reality TV growth, despite what certain articles in certain magazines would tell you about reality TV being on life support. They just announced another big show that's coming on Netflix. They're going to have their own third wave show now. That's not just like perfect matches for dating specifically. They're going to have a show mm -hmm. that's third wave, like everybody can come in. Um, Let's go. They're casting. Animal husbandry right date, by the way. Horse saw horseback riding on the beach. Oh, wow. I didn't wake up early enough for that, but yeah, it that's occurred. definitely going to be in there. Well, Whenever think, that is. I think the next season is DC. Uh, I don't know. No, I mean, it's already shot, whatever it is. We'll see when it comes. I can't wait. It's coming soon, <laughs> I would guess. Um, I also think that the more these shows exist and the more of them there are, it will start to become impossible to not go somewhere where a reality TV show has been shot. I was watching The Matchmaker. Yeah. This is not even my scream, but I was watching a Matchmaker episode where two people went on a date in this uh, little building called Third Street Dance. I have passed this building a million times driving back and forth. And you always see people like dancing. Mm -hmm. They take like ballroom dancing lessons and salsa dancing lessons or whatever. And it's like the Cute. second story. You can look in through the glass windows. And I remember not that long ago driving past it and they were shooting something in it. I could see people with cameras and lights. And I'm like, did I accidentally witness them shooting that matchmaker date? I might have. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. You walk by it every day. Not even every day. I'd say every third day, I probably pass it. We are, by the way, going on vacation next week, and I will be in Mallorca. And nice. guess what? That was a little scream I had a little while ago that I realized Colton had been on a date there. Mm -hmm. Another reality fan told me, well, yeah, they filmed Love Island there too. Oh. And I screamed i i mean this is my screen for when i come back but uh <laughs> i was i could it You're came from such a different screams. direction that i didn't see it see it i can't stop screaming <laughs> i didn't see it coming and i was like oh my god of course they filmed in mallorca and now i'm like oh, now i have to find the villa you got to start a scream calendar it's hard i i mean i gotta just i have screams all over the world now i know that's pretty cool though my scream yeah. this week Happened right here in Los Angeles, California, in mm -hmm. uh, Gore West, <laughs> in my home. Gore HQ. Gore HQ. There are moments, I, I've made art in some capacity basically my whole life. At a certain point, it became mm -hmm. professional. Writing, painting. Yeah, drawing on your arms. All, all kinds of stuff. I was never paid for drawing that. Drawing on your But I've been back. paid for some visual art. Certainly, I've been paid for writing. I would consider podcasting to be art. Um, yeah. And every once in a while... While highest you're form. making something, huh? Podcasting is the highest art form? I don't know if Hello? it's the highest art form. I mean, it certainly is the one that requires the most effort and work. But every once in a while, and at least in my life, I don't know if other artists feel similarly, you'll be working on something kind of in the quiet darkness alone by yourself. And you can feel when you're doing it like, oh, shit, this is something. Like, I'm doing something here that is of value or that will have a big impact or mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, the first time I probably felt this was when I was writing my first book, Average American Male. I was mm. like halfway done with it. And I was like, I think I'm doing something here that is going to like turn some heads. I think this is going to work. You just get that little feeling that's like, shit. I've never had that feeling. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> well, I, I encourage you to keep doing it. I mean, you didn't have that feeling we were writing How to Win the Bachelor? I had it a little bit with that. Um, I remember my first 
big movie that I sold, not not the first one that I sold, but the first one that like got into a bidding war. When I was writing it, I was like, this is people are gonna go nuts when they read this. And indeed it happened. I had wow. that same feeling. It's rare that feeling, but I had that same feeling when I was finishing. <laughs> I'm not here to make friends. <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute, wait the a minute. The song that we played at the beginning. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And I know, okay. yes. Had I taken some I mean, medicine? It is good. Yes, it is good. But I, I, I swear medicine? to you, I just think that right now, in terms of where AI technology is, in its yeah. uh, kind of intersection of making art, I think most people either hate it, they fear it, they don't understand yeah. it, or they use it to make kind of novel, jokey stuff. They'll Bad type art. into like chat GPT, give me some lyrics for this kind of a song. Then they'll just throw it into Suno or Udio and be like, here, let's see what happens. And they'll put it on the internet and people will laugh at it and it might go around Twitter. But I'm trying to use this stuff to make like legit good songs that are mm -hmm. about Bachelor things. But also, if you don't know what Bachelor is, it doesn't matter. They're still good songs. And I thought yeah. for a moment, I had that feeling with I'm, I'm not here to make friends. I was like, shit, I'm doing it. This is a good ass song. And I just I mean I, it's so good. You know? And you showed me the little cover art thing you made for it too, which <laughs> yeah. is also really good. <laughs> yeah. Um I think it's beautiful and I think it kind of attaches to our greater screen, which is just like you and I can't stop making content that is Yeah peripherally related to the bachelor <laughs> no i mean for sure i would if not say directly in terms of a muse in terms of something that has influenced my output my artistic output in my life bachelor is yeah. by far the heaviest influence <laughs> i don't know how many memes i've made in service of it we wrote a fucking book mm -hmm. about it we did the hyper binge all of that now we we've been doing a podcast for, for five years what's that we had a bidding war for the book too i should have had that confidence but oh I knew we were going to sell the book. I felt very confident that the book's idea was good enough and our execution would be good enough that we could sell it. Um, but yeah, at any rate, uh, the, the Bachelor making these songs gave me that sensation again. And it is rare. I don't get it a That's lot. Great. But when I do, I'm like, oh God, I'm on to something. And then I have to like keep pursuing it until it reaches its final form, which again will be a 10 song album. The next song is How Could You? In parentheses, make love to me. <laughs> the title alone, yeah. that's a billboard a topper right there. <laughs> How could you, Perez? You know, maybe. I, I don't know. I don't know what would happen with any of this stuff. But eventually, once I have the album, I'm going to put it all out and we'll see where it goes from there. But let's move on. We have I one more screen. I hope that moment is soon. What's that? I hope that moment is soon, but I know we can't rush genius. I mean, it's taken me, what, a month and a half to make these three songs, I think, or two months maybe. I'm going to speed it up, though. Now my, my workflow is down now. A lot of those first three songs were like experimentation. Now I understand how yeah, to do it. Yeah, just do Not Here to Make Friends, Chad K's version. <laughs> Something like that. Just double them all. <laughs> I'm going to have a Love Level song. I'm going to have How Could You Make Love to Me If You're Not In Love With Me. Uh, mm -hmm. I have one that I'm calling Fantasy Sweet, spelled S-W-E-E-T. That's like, Cute. this fantasy is so sweet, I don't want it to end. I fell in love with somebody who wound up being my best friend. Something like that. I don't know yet. We'll get there. How about a sparkler one that's kind of like glamorous? A glamorous country song. I'll try. It's, I mean, here's also the the weird part about this is, I have never really listened to country music, and now I'm making a whole album of country songs. <laughs> I but find that you bizarre. Grow up in the country? Isn't country in your DNA? Uh, I mean, I hated it though. I like I I despise mm. all my friends who listen to country music. I'm like I can't listen to this. Turn it off. Now I'm making ten songs about The Bachelor in that format. That's my scream. <laughs> so let's move on. We have one more scream to get to. If you listen to this Good program, one. you know we aren't the only ones screaming. Everybody out there is also screaming. And if you want to submit your scream to us to be played right here on Game of Roses, simply go to patreon.com slash Game of Roses. Join us in the pit. Get access to the Discord. Record your scream in a one-minute or shorter audio format. Upload it into Submit Your Screams, that channel in our Discord. We played the best ones here. Are you ready, Pace Case? I'm ready. Here we go. Hello, pit. 
My scream this week is for my FIMP recipient, ring winner, and father to my child army. We have been watching our beloved game together since he first introduced me to Chris Soul season. This month, we're celebrating our 15th wedding anniversary by recreating our honeymoon trip to New Orleans. And as we were planning, instead of reminiscing, we kept coming up with screams, like eating beignets like the great one and practicing our gaze play so we could spot butterflies in City Park and stare deeply into their tiny winged souls. But unfortunately, we were not official pit dwellers until now. I couldn't think of a better anniversary present than surprising my empathetic king with pit membership. I hope you can help me, help me, help me, help me surprise him this week. Praise be Dark Lord Palmer. P.S. He's also an avid birder, so if you need a flying creature correspondent, he's your guy. So much so, he often pauses the document to point out that many times the bird sounds in the background are not native to where they're filming, so cannot be real. Yes, Pitt. Even the birds are frankenbitten. <laughs> pretty good. A pretty good scream. I mean, I also believe birds aren't real. Well, I mean, you see that constantly in our beloved game. I've pointed this out a million times, especially in Paradise. But whenever they want to, they'll do this on two-on-one sometimes too. Whenever they want to make it seem more desolate, they'll cut to a shot mm-hmm. of a bird flying in the sky Hawk. and just put in an eagle screech. Yeah. And it's like, that's not, yeah. none of this is real. Yeah. Um, but welcome to the pit, first of all. Thank you for joining us here. And the welcome. New Orleans trip sounds great, by the way. If I ever go to New Orleans, I'd probably be doing the same things. And you got to go to that haunted house. Didn't they force them to stay in a haunted house or, and pretend it was haunted? You remember this? I don't know, but I saw the dog beignet today. Really? So, is that connected? Yes, everything is. Also, I think Help Me, Help Me, Help Me could be a good song. Possibly. Help me, help me, help me. Do I just hear it now as country road? music. I hear it all as country music. At any rate, thank you so much take for submitting moment, your Take a say your goodbyes. A Tamsig song. Oh, oh my so God. Many possibilities. So take a moment and say your goodbyes. Something about, like, dry your eyes, something... Mm-hmm. Get the wet you, thumb in there. Just because you're. I saw an analysis of Tom Sandoval's tear play, end. by the way, on the internet, and it was really good. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, I've and it was it talking about whether he's wiping the tears or not, and that means whether it's real or not. This person's theory. I'm curious in traders anyway. if his presence, if he will be like a maligned figure immediately. If there will be people who just like don't like him because of who he is, and they're like, get it rid of him. I don't care. Screw this guy. I don't want him on Maybe. my show. Maybe. But he's also a number for the housewives, for the Bravo people. So Is he? I don't know. I don't know. I just... To me, those housewives seem like they are their own thing. And I know they're part of the Bravo universe, but... But they're going to team up with Sierra from Summer House. She's going to go right with them. Yeah. But we'll she's see. not going to... Her, Dolores, and Dorinda, it's like... It's hard to think of them having patience for Sandoval. I don't know. It'll, I can't wait. I can't use this. It's going to be great. <laughs> the show just keeps getting better and better. But uh, thank you, everyone. Today I talked about for... traders and challengers a lot at the wedding as well, as Love is Blind Denver. <laughs> Makes sense. Yep. That was me if it was you. <laughs> Well, anyway, thank you everyone for joining us for this week in Bachelor Nation. We will be back on Monday with a digging deeper and a nothing else, right? We're taking that week off. Next week begins our vacay. Yes, we I'll are probably still be making some content. Off. If you're on Luz our Patreon, I'll be there. <laughs> Don't do worry about it. Vacation as he pleases. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. If you're on our Patreon, I'll be there. I'll, I'll oh. be in the pit on the Patreon for sure this week. I'll, I'll probably do a live show on Monday as well. But uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. And before we go, Pace Case, as always, what is that dwab at? It's been 8,110 days without an Asian bachelor. Praise be Dark Lord Palmer. Please rate this podcast. Please review this podcast. Please get a friend to listen to us. And then please rate this podcast. Please review this podcast. Please get a friend to listen to us. And then please rate this podcast. Please review this podcast. 
Please get a friend to listen to us and then 